My name is Christine and I'm a keeper here at Woodland Park Zoo and my coworker here is Peter. And today we're standing outside the tiger exhibit and we have Boomy here for you. Boomy is one of our male Malayan tigers and Peter is working with him doing some training. And this is what we do with our tigers to help bond with them and to help teach them to do things that we need them to do when we need to check out their bodies. So we can have them lay down. And that's what Boomy's doing really well right now. <laughs> we can also have them do a target, which is what Peter's holding up right there towards Boomy's face. And Boomy's supposed to put his nose on the target. There he goes. And then he gets some milk and that's his treat that lets him know that he did the right thing. And that target lets us put him into different positions so we can check his body. He also knows how to open his mouth. He'll sit. He's not very motivated this afternoon though. Let's see if he'll open, there he goes. He opened his mouth a little bit there. So that lets us check his teeth without having to put him under anesthesia, which is much better for him and the rest of the tigers that we have here. Boomy is a 10 year old male and he weighs about 284 pounds and he is our biggest Malayan tiger here. We have one other Malayan male tiger named Olan and Olan is in a different area while Boomy's on exhibit and then they get to switch. So Olan will be out on exhibit in a couple of days and Boomy will be in a different area. Boomy's very relaxed today. True or false? Within the last hundred years, three subspecies of tigers have vanished forever from the planet. True. Sadly, in the last 90 years, three subspecies of tigers have gone extinct. Javan, Caspian, and Bali. A fourth, the South China, has not been seen in the wild for more than a couple decades and is considered extinct. The Malayan tiger is one of the smallest subspecies of tigers. So at 284 pounds, he might seem quite large, but an Amur tiger can get up to almost 650 or 700 pounds. So almost three times bigger than what Boomy is here. Boomy eats about seven pounds of meat every day. He is a tiger and tigers are cats and cats only eat meat. So that is what he gets to eat every day. The milk that he gets here is just his treat. We'll also feed him chunks of meat too as a treat. He's very talkative. He likes to chuff at his keepers. Chuffing is the sound that tigers make. That's their friendly sound. It's similar to a purr, but it's made in a very different way. And big cats can chuff, but they cannot purr. So. Small cats, if you have a cat at home, they make that purring sound. And this tiger can't make that sound, so they make the chuffing sound. It's kind of an airy sound that they make with their lips. I am not a good chuffer, so I'm not going to try to demonstrate myself. But Boomy will usually chuff at us. He may have chuffed when he first came up to this area here. True or false? Tiger stripes are useful camouflage. True, indeed they are. Their stripes help the tigers blend in with grasslands and forests where they live. Shadows and branches match the stripes, which are useful as the mighty predators stalk prey. Now tigers are interesting because they have these stripes and this orange coloration, and each tiger's stripes are unique to that specific tiger. So they're like the fingerprint for the tiger. Another interesting thing about the stripes is it's also matched to the skin. So if we were to shave Boomy, he would still have the same stripe pattern. You'll also notice that on the backs of Boomy's ears are these white spots. And these are left over from when he was a cub. Baby tigers, they think, have these spots on the backs of their ears to make it look like eyeballs. Um, looking back through the jungle so mom can keep track of the cubs, but they're not sure why they keep these white spots as they get bigger. And most all tigers have these white spots on the backs of their ears. They also have very sensitive whiskers and very long whiskers, and they use those whiskers 
to feel their environment. In the wild, it's very, very dense jungle. And so the whiskers allow them to know if they can enter a space that's going to be big enough for the rest of their bodies. True or false? Tigers do not know how to swim and are afraid of the water. False. On the contrary, unlike many other cat species, tigers are powerful swimmers and are capable of swimming across rivers and lakes. They also enter water to cool off or pursue prey. One of the unique things about tigers is they're one of the only big cats that like the water. So we have a water feature in our exhibit for our tigers. They like the shallower portion of the water, but on really hot days, they'll purposely just go into the water and lay in the water and play in the water. Boomy also has a tub that he likes to lay in when he's in the back and he'll just lay in the tub and enjoy the water. And then he'll jump out of the water and run around. Conservation tips. No matter where you are, even here in Seattle, you can protect tigers around the world. The biggest threats to their survival are wildlife trafficking and habitat loss, much of it related to the palm oil industry. If you have a sweet tooth, be smart about sustainable palm oil. Use the zoo's treat shopping guide and save forests and wildlife a world away. You can find it at zoo.org forward slash palm oil. Umi is about seven and a half feet tall when he stands up on the mesh. I'm not sure that he will stand up, but we'll see. He's like, I'm gonna rub instead. There, so Peter's over six feet tall and Boomy's just standing just at the right height to get that milk, but you can see he's about eye level with Peter, but his back feet are a little bit back from the mesh. So he could probably jump up to 12 feet. Our fences here are 15 to 25 feet tall, so much higher than what he could jump. Be a savvy traveler. Some of the jewelry and trinkets you see might be made from illegally poached animal parts. Use the Be Informed, Buy Informed travel guide to avoid being an unknowing wildlife trafficker. Go to zoo.org forward slash travel guide. This is a nice behavior for us to see his underbelly. So if he has any injuries on his chest or his stomach, we can see that and then we work with them to be able to spray things on the belly or the chest in order to do any kind of medical treatments we might need to do. This training also allows us to position them in order to give vaccines without having to put them under anesthesia and go to the animal hospital. His tongue is very rough, so the surface of the tongue has papillae on it. And just like your cat at home, it's a very, very rough tongue, but the papillae on his tongue are much longer than what you would have on the tongue of your cat at home. So it's a lot like Velcro, the rough side of Velcro. Visit zoo.org forward slash tigers to help support the Woodland Park Zoo Panthera Malayan Tiger Conservation Project. Thank you for coming to see us today and learning more about Boomi and we'll see you soon.